all you who, excuse me, come all you who are struggling. Come all you who are crippled by pain and suffering. Come to the, a God, to worship a God who heals your pain. Come to worship a God who gives forgiveness. Oh, let us worship God who sets us free and gives us new life. And will the children come forward for children's time as we sing the first verse of Praise Him, All Ye Little Children, 188. Find out some neat things that are fun to know about them. How 
don't want that. And you know what? In the Bible, Jesus said that you'll learn some things that you like to do and are good at and that you can share with other people. And everybody has something neat and good they're good at that you can uncover by talking with them to find out what they're good at, what you can have fun learning about them, and they learn about you, and they both can share. And some of the things that you're good at, you may even be able to help them. Isn't that neat? Let's talk to God a little bit about that in prayer. Okay? God, we thank you that Evan, Carson, and McKenna will find the things that they like to do and are good at. And that they can even share some of those things that help other people. And then you both can have fun. They both can have fun. Amen. All right. Now, you can go back and join Rita for Discovery Club. Thank you. And we all can be grateful for the things that each of us are good at that we can share together. Thank you, Ron. Now we please stand and join together as we sing hymn number 552. I am thine, O Lord, we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4.
through the Redeemer sent in human form. We are grateful that we are given the chance to begin again, and that nothing we have done can separate us from your love. We lift up all those in need this morning, asking you to pour out your blessing, that they might have new light and new hope for facing their challenges. Amen. Amen. And we'll have a moment of silent prayer, after which Josh will close with the prayer. Dear God, thank you for this day and this chance to worship you and just come together as a congregation. And uh, just pray that your Holy Spirit be here with us and just fill us up for this this time and uh, just prepare us for this upcoming season. And we lift up our prayer request to you, uh, both those that have been named and also those prayer requests that are that are silent that people don't want to to voice or or just scared to talk about. Uh, we lift those up too. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, 810, 510? 510. Thank you. 
Will the ushers come forward, please, uh, to collect the offering? Dear God, we ask that uh, you take this offering and uh, just let your will be done. And just take it and uh, bless the church and uh, just the, those in this community. In Jesus' name, amen. to 
till up and work the manure in there, and then you can plant the lemon tree, and you have to wait for that lemon tree to actually be able to produce the lemon, the lemon so you can make lemonade. But wait, there is more. It can get worse. Life can truly pour down on you instead of just raining. Because sometimes life kindly will give you some lemon tree seeds. And then the manure, it's fresh. It's so fresh that you are actually going to have to shovel it into a giant pile and then wait for it to compost over the next year before you can really start using it. So then you have to take this finely composted manure, work it into the ground, and then you have this little lemon seedling tree that you can plant in the ground. And so you're, you've got a lot of work to do, and you've got to be real patient with what life gave you. Um, so things, I know this situation evolved quickly, and I think it's much more accurate for life than just life giving us limits. Because there's times when you go to the doctor thinking that you're just gonna get a mole removed, but it turns out that it's cancerous. Or you just want some better medicine for a migraine that you, you haven't been able to get rid of. And then you leave the doctor's office talking about hospice. And it's kind of like the situation with the church, where we talked about leasing the building to someone still maintaining ownership. And then that changed into selling the building. Or the ongoing conversation about the church and how do we maintain our independent identity. Do we... Do we stay, keep meeting off to the, the side area, or do we just merge with another church? There's a lot of conversations going along about how to save the church and what's next. We tried to sustain it for the next generation, and now, as Rob's talked about, or Robin's talked about, just taking off, taking the church off of life support. It is hard and challenging to keep the faith and to get through these hard times. We try to get through the storms of life, but it's not always easy, nor is it pleasant to navigate these hard storms. So just like in Acts, um, Paul tells the crew and everyone around that they should not sell on. They've already had terrible luck with selling as it is, and he tells them that they, they should stop. It, it's actually a prophetic vision that he seems to have with talking about losing all everything, the ship and their lives. And they choose to disregard it, and they sell forward. Uh, as they sail on, and it is a disaster. They drift around the sea for several weeks. They run out of food. They have to try to hold the boat together by throwing rope around the hull underneath it, underneath the boat, to try to keep it from breaking apart. This whole time they are fighting for their lives, trying to make it to any land. Luke later talks about divine intervention that brings them out of the storm. And that whole paragraph could have been avoided if the ship had just stayed where they were, if they had listened to Paul and not set sail. God did not want them to go on this journey. He did not want them to leave. God spoke to Paul, telling Paul that he needed to let them know to stop the ship and do not go forward. God's plan here is for Paul and the rest of those with him to avoid the disaster, to avoid the stress that came with this long journey this group was not intended to hit this storm in life. God did not want them to go through that suffering. If the crew had stayed at that port, the boat would have been safe. They would have had lemons. They could have made lemonade by selling the food 
foods that they needed to during as they wintered there. The boat captain could have saved the ship as they waited for everything to pass. They would have had lemonade. They did not wait, and they lost all their lemons and all the manure for the lemon tree. It was gone once they left for that voyage. The crew threw everything into the sea. All that money was lost in the sea, and the ship broke apart. In Acts 28, verse 20, it says that they all lost hope of being saved. It sounds like that even Paul and like his disciples of Luke had lost hope, and they were expecting to die out in that sea. Until an angel of the Lord came and provided comfort to Paul and said that they would all be okay. So that brings us to Matthew chapter 5, verses 2 uh, through 5. Um, and, they be and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Now, in this passage, it's easy to think about poor as just being those who are struggling financially, and that is true, along with those who are struggling in their faith and have strong doubts and just are questioning, where are you, God, through this? And just, they're just stressed out from everything going on in life, and they just have their doubts about God in this time. It can be hardships like financial struggles, family struggles, looking at the political environment, health concerns. These all take a toll on our faith and our belief in God. These worldly struggles do affect us physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And Jesus says that there is hope for the poor in spirit. It is in the kingdom of heaven. That they will become rich in the kingdom of heaven. This passage does not promise earthly desires or say that those with the most toys is closest to God. And this is very counterculture today in how we think about those that have the most toys are probably most beloved by God or that those churches that have the largest memberships are blessed by God. And it's easy to think that if a church is losing membership, that it must be God pruning the tree or punishing the church. That God cursed that church. Just remember that all the churches are struggling today. And it's important to remember that we are called to be faithful, not successful. All right? It's an important distinction. Then Jesus continues to talk. He says, the morning will be comforted. And we can mourn for a variety of things, from family and friends, deaths, the loss of friendships. We can also mourn the loss of a job, the loss of a church. These are hard events to process. These deaths do require us to go through some painful emotions if we want the pain to end. And they are, at, and there are times in life that we, we should not go through alone. Jesus offers hope, hope to those who are suffering. Jesus recognizes them. He acknowledges their pain of their mourning and tells them that he sees those who are mourning. Jesus humanizes them. In the Beatitudes, Jesus lifts up those whose society tries to avoid those whose society tries to ignore, those who feel far away from God, Jesus says they are the ones close to God. Jesus lifts up those who need help in society and say, and who feel far away from God. So the NIV uses the word blessed. There's other translations that use the word happy. Um, both blessed and happy have been kind of Americanized and to think about just a big house, fancy car, and easy life that does not involve challenges. But Jesus disregards this earthly wisdom and says that those who are struggling are in fact those 
God pulls under his wings, and that who God is thinking about. And we're, we're not far removed from the times of Jesus when Jesus was alive. They had very similar attitudes of those that had the, the big cottons and the fancy houses were the ones that God was showing favor to. The respected religious leaders at that time would have these loud, elegant prayers as they walked around with the small scrolls attached to the wrists and the foreheads, and Jesus consistently said they were the ones furthest from God. And Jesus is saying that he wants to bless those who feel far away, that blessings from God mean you draw into your relationship with God. And that means allowing God to speak into those deep hurts and those questions that we have. The Psalms are full of pain and hurt as the author cries out to God. The Psalms demonstrate our need to lament to God and tell him about our pain and grief and despair that we are enduring. Though that through the pain, blessing means that you grow closer to God through that pain and that God comforts you in that mourning process. So how do we apply this today in our little church? Yes, we are going through a rough storm right now. And we are trying to figure out what the church will look like in January, in just three months. We are losing membership during this time because we do have members who are dying and others who can no longer attend because of health, health concerns and issues that prevent them from attending. This is a lot to process on top of our own personal life struggles. I know I've been told that getting old isn't for the faint of heart. I know some of you have a lot of doctor's appointments to go to and that, that's very challenging to get to it for some of you, to get to those appointments. And I want to acknowledge that pain and that hurt that you are all going through right now. Life may not be going as you all had hoped, and some people may still be struggling with that message from Robin of talking about the church being on life support and pulling the life support from the church. You may disagree with his suggestion of closing the church at the end of the year. And that is, that is hard news that we got just last week from him on him resigning at the end of the year. And we all are in different places of accepting or denying that, and that's okay. <clears throat> Through all this, we can find comfort with God if we are willing to wrestle with him. Just like Jacob wrestled with God, and Jacob refused to let go until he was given a blessing. He struggled with God and fought with him, and fought with him. He did get his head dislocated. He was also given a blessing. So there is, there is tension of that through those blessings that we do. It's not, it's not always just rainbows and unicorns, that it is through a storm and it does cause that pain for us. And through it, we do get a blessing. We don't have to be shy about our pain that we're going through. God knows us better than we know ourselves. The only person you are fooling is yourself, and that just prolongs the pain. And God made us to be in community with each other. God literally made man, and man had direct access to God. And God still said man needed a companion. So he made a woman. He made a woman out of the man's own flesh and bone and blood. As you navigate this, this storm, it's okay to follow these biblical principles of wrestling with God and telling about your pain and just 
talking about what you feel this injustice is. And just, it's important that you don't go through this alone, that you do have a community, um, that you do talk with friends and family and other community groups. And if you don't have any other groups, it's okay to go out and find these groups. It is good to have connection with other people and to just grow that network of support. All right, so I just want to take a few minutes um, where you all will break into groups. Uh, I just look like two or three people. If you can, I encourage uh, couples to break up into different groups, all right? Um, kind of get out of our comfort zone a little bit. If there's someone you haven't talked with recently, or very much with that you, you meet and uh, you get together and just talk about the pains that you're each feeling in this season, just for a few minutes and then you just, you listen to each other and then just say a little prayer, okay? So go ahead and uh, try to branch out and find someone that new that you haven't talked with and over a small church, but uh, uh, try to get out and talk with someone and then just for a few minutes and then we'll, we'll come back together, okay?
live in this? this is, um, my mom was in Fort Collins. Fort Collins. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, uh, Lori Nunley's folks that live in this. Jesus' name, amen.